everything beyond about 10 feet is out of focus, correct? That yeah. it's always at eye level and that everything is blurry and that's intentional so that we are not really seeing all of his world because it remains subjective. I mean, it's clearly a very specific choice you make. It's, it's about the individual experience of the camp. So that the, in, in, in cinematic terms, find a way to, to convey to the audience the limitations of the individual. Something that I think has never been really suggested or, or shown. This kind, this kind of limitations in the, during the Holocaust. We always have this distance. We always have the post for point of view, but what if we went back to the here and now of that? So that's why we we actually established uh, um, guidelines for ourselves for the, with the cinematographer to uh, really to what, what what we did and what we wanted to do and w what we wanted to avoid. You know, we wanted to uh, remain at high, uh, at high level. We wanted to um, uh, to avoid all kinds of. Uh, uh, of temptation to make beauty out of human suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, so really to be as raw and po as possible in this film. I know you haven't, you've, you probably have done as much music as you have done acting. What was your, you were looking for in your soul and how did you guys come together? I knew him from before. Uh, I met him uh, 10 years before um, and we became friends. And when I started casting for this film, although I didn't know which for which part actually, but I, I knew I wanted him in the film. So I, uh, at some point we, I met him, uh, tra he, he lives in New York now. He's originally from Hungary, Geza. But um, I, he, he, he had to travel to Hungary to, to have some additions with us uh, for the second part, uh, which is the Abra Abraham's part. And then he started we, we ask him to, to be Saul, the main character as well, in certain configurations with other actors. And he was just very, you know, convincing. And, um, and it seemed that he was uh, in his, you know, in his, in his, uh, you know, in his existence, in his form of just, just behaving and, and, and re reflected so much of what I had in mind. And he, 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 he became alive, you know. That, that was, the, that was the, the first step. Do you remember those auditions and when you went from playing Abraham to playing Saul? And Laszlo is a very um, principled and disciplined filmmaker, so we, we really didn't want uh, nine, uh, 2014 somehow in this movie whatsoever. Let it be a body language or the way I speak, you know. Um, so, so we really... Without going right to the lines, there were just some very basic conversation taking place for a good while. I think Laszlo knew that I am, you know, deeply connected with the subject matter, and I didn't have to go through, you know, the regular reading assignments. I guess some other actors had to do, but I did my own homework, of course, on the Zonder Commando, especially. You know, what were they about to, and how did their lives look like? Not so much their thoughts and feelings, but their lives in the most precise way. What what were they doing? Where? When? How? And uh, I did not have the chance to meet any former Zonda Commando members before the shooting, but I was privileged to meet one of them a couple of weeks ago here in L.A. Who was in Los Angeles? Right here, a couple of miles from here. A, a Greek Jew. Uh, who arrived in December to Auschwitz. Now, I mean, imagine a below zero weather for a Greek person from Thessaloniki. So, you know, they were promised to, to, to have a better life, so, you know, heated environment, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So he, he raised his hand, but uh, he never voluntarily wanted to be part of the uh, extermination process, obviously. So in any case, I did, do remember these improvisations. I don't know how or when did Laszlo decided to offer me the lead role. There's a reference in the story to Saul saying, I'll tell them where the stories, where the stories you're writing are buried or the letters you're writing are buried. Was there existing source material from some of the people who died there about what their experiences were like? And was there specific stories and information about the Sutter Commandos and their lives? What was, what was the reference you found? Yeah, that that was the point of departure of the film when I first read uh, the the so-called scrolls of Auschwitz, uh, the writings by the members of the Zoner Commando. These were 
made by the Zona Commando members uh, in the middle of the extermination process. You know, they would write in secret and put put those writings into the into the ground. And some of those writings were were found after the war. By the way, uh, a historian told me that probably 90% of those writings have never been found. So it's still Auschwitz. It's still full of writings about st about their individual lives and and the experience of the Holocaust. And it was it was a great shock for me when I read it because it it transported me as a as a reader into the middle of the extermination, and. Um, and so, so it's uh, s some of the writings are very uh, factual. Some are some some are more poetic or or more uh, literature like, mm -hmm. but uh, but very you know an in the, I I don't know why these writings are not really well known, but uh, they're an incredible incredible angle to look at the extermination. And I wanted to find a way to uh, to to immerse the viewer. In this film, uh, and 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 be transported as 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 the writings transport also the viewers to 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 the center. For people who don't know, you have you've been teaching uh, high school children Jewish history, correct? Judaic studies. Um, was it important to you that this movie not be about survival and heroism, but it be about truth and the people who died? Tremendously important. I mean, we know that. Um, Two out of three Jews were murdered in Europe by the Holocaust. And all these movies I've seen, they're always, always about the lucky third, the one who made it. So I've been waiting for someone for a long time to be able to address this, um, you know, make a movie about the first two, because every survival was due to a systematic error. No one meant to survive. So I understand that this is a dark topic, but, but I, I, I've grown tired and uncomfortable and frustrated, frankly, to see all these movies somehow to reassure the audience that, that the Holocaust can be integrated into the continuum of history. And I, I found when I was there first time, 19 years old, a university student in Poland, and I visited the camp for the very first time, I right away knew that something has ended, my childhood is over, and this sort of transformational nature of the event was not conveyed to me through most of these movies I've seen. You also clearly want to depict the camps as factories, that they are factories and they refer to the dead as pieces, that it is a factory that is producing something, what it's producing are dead bodies. Was that part of your kind of overall design in terms of how you wanted to depict the work there, that these were factories and they were in, engaged in the business of death? Absolutely, and they were factories, and, um, and we wanted to preserve the, um, a, a sort of realistic approach uh, based on facts and try to not to make a, fil a filmic drama Mm -hmm. out of every situation you know that and that's i think also something very interesting is that there's no not always the drama that we imagine but still it's it's the middle of 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 hell so um there there's a sort of um you know routine and there's a that that's established for these people even the zonder commando members have a routine mm -hmm. at some point they became they become machines because they have to it's just uh, they're in a traumatized state but uh, th this this place the concentration camps were you know were buildings and there were bu people in, in 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 there so we 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 just wanted to you know to 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 have a raw experience of it and not say we're in another we're in another place another planet we're it's here and now, and, and, and try to find the, w the ways in cinema to, to, to translate that. What is that like when you're on set, when you're building your set of a death camp, when you're in Budapest creating from the ground up? I mean, oh, it's a converted factory, right? What does that feel like as a filmmaker, as an artist, to create something that is both profane and sacred at the same time? It's, it's extremely uncomfortable. I, I, we went, visited 
with the production designer and um, and the cinematographer, the sets, but the sets really looked. Uh, they they were in one you know interior part was in one one piece and the exterior was also kind of in one piece so and 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 everything is was in one piece and we had the feeling of being in a real place so I I, I said to them we both we 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 just built ourselves a crematorium and that is that is really you know. Uh, it, it it opens a perspective that's that's scary, and but but actually, it is sacred, you know, in a way it becomes sacred, and and we, and and I don't have a visual memory of the shoot. In a way, I didn't look. Mm -hmm. I the only eye that 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 would remain is the camera's eye. I really don't ha I don't remember what, what what you know on the shoot. I just remember the angles. Do you remember it? And what was it like as an actor? Because your character is probably trying so hard not to see what is going around him. He's averting his eyes through so much of the movie. But as an actor, you're obviously seeing what's around you. Did you find that kind of an odd predicament in terms of what you were witnessing and where it put you as an actor on set? I try not to really. I, I more, you know, did my best to remain in my inner reality. Because mm -hmm. it, after all, this was a movie making, there's a shooting was going on, lots of instructions, mm -hmm. things. And uh, there, I really did not, you know, socialize in the breaks. I was not, uh, you know, try, try to really just be Saul, you know, and, and it was a sort of on and off thing for me. You know, I, I, I went, I went home, I, 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 I've been living in New York, so I didn't have my family. The, the production rented me a room. And I really was in a, in a solitary place, you know, situation. And I think that that's what I needed. 